All right, guys, I want to want to welcome you again to Substitute Teachers Lounge for this week. Now, we have interviewed teachers and substitute teachers and students before, but this is my first interview with an administrator. We're going to talk to principal, a principal. Darren, how are you doing today? Very well, very well, Greg. Thank you good, for having good. me on today. I appreciate that. I know your daughter, Sarah, is in the room right now. Sarah, stick your head in there so everybody can see you. Hello. <laughs> Let's talk to you first. How's that? Okay. Now, tell, tell you told me, but tell everybody what grade you're in. I'm in sixth grade, and I go to the school model. Okay. Class. All right. That sounds great. Now, what's your favorite subject? Oh, I would have to say, <laughs> um, reading because reading. i because i need that, to get better in reading gotcha so, yes. so have while we've all been quarantined have you had work to do i assume every week and and most usually every day of every week yes yes i have all about right. maybe five assignments maybe a day okay all right well let me ask you this you've had substitute teachers haven't you yes the only time I have substitute taught at your school was for fifth grade, and I just did it one day. Usually, I'm in the county schools, but let's mm -hmm. don't don't mention any names. But think of the ones that were your favorite substitute teachers, and then tell me what you liked about them. Hmm. Well. I liked one that was in the went last year when I was in fifth grade, and she kind of just I would say kind of helped everybody yeah. if they needed something or Good. if you were having something that you just couldn't figure out. So yeah. Okay. Good. Good. And so here there was one in the i'd say i think it was i think it was just that one teacher that was okay uh oh yeah well let me ask you one general knowledge or not general knowledge but a trivia question before we get out of here not really trivia just tell me what your favorite movie is oh crap <laughs> All the Disney movies. All the Disney movies. Do you have Disney Plus at home? Yes. Okay. Me too. That's how I caught up, caught up on all the uh, Marvel movies when we first mm -hmm. got it. So it took me 28 of them, but I got there. I got there. Well, it was good talking to you, Sarah. You have a good day, okay? Okay. All right. See you later. <laughs> all right. All right, Darren, just tell us what uh, – I usually start, I like to start with everybody's journey. I know you're a principal now, but tell us a little bit about your education. And I, I know you were a coach. So tell us a little bit about everything that finally got you into being a principal. Feel well, free to embellish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I come from the school of a uh, hard knock, so to speak. And, um, uh, I've, I've kind of lived my life by making mistakes and then uh, recovering from those mistakes and hopefully learning from them and moving on. And uh, But, you know, at an early age, uh, my grandmother, she was a, uh, a retired school teacher. So I don't recall her teaching in, in my life, but she, she taught school and uh, my grandfather, they, they were really big about uh, getting an education and doing something, you know, with your education. And uh, so my grandmother graduated from EKU, which was a Eastern Teachers College, I believe was the name of right. it, back in the, right. in the 19, late 1930s. And um, she had actually, at that time, began teaching prior to uh, having her degree. You could, you could actually teach in the classroom and not have the uh, degree to do that. And she was working toward that degree. But uh, so I can remember their influences early on about getting an education and uh, the, the way that they would talk to me and my brothers and, and my uh, cousins about uh, school and the importance of school. And uh, they often said that uh, you don't go to college, that anybody can go to college, that uh, 
you have, you know, you got to get a degree. And yes. uh, so having the correct mindset about education was uh, instilled early on. Uh, both of my parents are educators as well. And okay. uh, my mother was a uh, middle grades social studies teacher. And my father was a comeback from industry teacher. He, he worked in Cincinnati in a factory uh, for a few years and then wound up coming back to uh, EKU in the 1960s and, and oh. got his uh, degree in industrial arts. Okay. And um, so I grew up around machinery that my dad would operate. My parents ran a little uh, workshop out of our basement, and the garage in our home where they made crafts and um, held uh, classes where people would come in and, and uh, dad would uh, create things in the workshop and I would help by sanding those materials and getting them ready to paint and then uh, the uh, ladies or gentlemen, whoever were joining, would come in, they had tables set up in the basement and, and they would have uh, painting nights, you know, where these people came in and talked and, and they painted and created uh, things that they could, you know, give away as gifts or decorate right. their homes with. So, um, with that being said, you know, being around a industrial type of situation, you know, a work type situation, though, even though I didn't know it, that was getting ingrained in my pedigree, so to speak. And right. um, so then, uh, fast forward a few years, graduate high school, um, wind up coming to EKU myself to get a degree. Um, initially started out with a uh, manufacturing track, I was going to go work in industry. And um, <clears throat> Really, because of my parents being teachers, my grandmother being teachers, I was kind of pushing myself away from that and trying to go a different path to set my own. But, you know, at the same time, I just always felt disconnected, if you will, from the right. um, path that I was on. And, and after some first semester in college and a couple of uh, uh, failures, not really super failures, but some failure had that occurred. I, I, real, I realized <laughs> that, hey, you know, I'm, I may be pursuing something that I really don't want to do, and I need to pursue something that I want to do. And that was work with people. And I was kind of pushing that away. So made a degree change and began pursuing a degree in industrial technology with an emphasis in technology education, which is the 1990s version of the industrial arts degree and probably gotcha. some of the industrial arts courses that that you may be aware of or that others may be aware of that um, may have taken in the you know 1970s or 1980s so um, that's how I got on that path to uh, making the switch into um, the teaching side of things and then uh, you mentioned the coaching while I was uh, I always played sports, various sports, but, um, it, you know, hung my hat up, so to speak, early in high school and didn't get to continue with that. But in, in college there, I was taking a course, and um, one of the gentlemen in the course was a non-traditional student, if you would. He, he's right. coming back from a, another career and trying to get his degree in technology education so that he could teach. And... Um, he comes into class one day and, and uh, he, he was from up north, I think New York State. And so he, 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 he kind of talked weird. He didn't talk like us. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah we're the, we talk, we, we don't talk funny at all. No, do we? we don't. It's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he comes in and, and in that uh, funny voice, he asked if anybody knows anything about basketball you know and uh, he doesn't know anything of, about basketball but his son's team needed a coach and he's volunteered to coach it and he doesn't know what he's doing and uh, so I told him that I'd be happy to help him so that's that's okay. how I got my start in basketball coaching oh, that's was cool. in college at EKU and they had a program in Richmond it was uh, at that time called the Richmond Youth Sports Program oh, and yeah. uh, so we had a little team there they were called the Pistons and uh, we, we did okay. You know, we probably weren't the best team, but we weren't the worst either. And, and uh, I learned a lot by working with the youth and right. actually by, by dealing with parents, believe it or not, that uh, 
that was a um, that was an experience, and it kind of helped me uh, through what was you know occurring for what was to come later. And I didn't yeah know dealing it. with God, people. Yeah, I was I, yeah. God was molding me for what was to come another day. Man, Absolutely, I, that, that's the one thing that I haven't uh, realized until you know later in life was that uh, that clay was being molded early on. You know, from the time that hanging out with my grandparents to being in that yeah. workshop with my parents from the experiences yeah. that, that I encountered at EKU to even teaching experiences and, and principalship. So um, that's more or less how, uh, you know, in a nutshell, I've come toward the education pathway. Okay. Now, did I read that your school is, I know it's kind of a, I'd call it a hybrid, but it's a high school age school. Yes, sir. It's uh, it's unique, and uh, we're we're actually grade eight through twelve right now. And, okay. Um, we what we do is go out and recruit students from traditional schools like uh, you know a high school or in our case with an eight the middle school and try to get students encourage them to come to our technical center so that okay. they can take uh, classwork and you know the doing of life. You know cool. where they get to t have the opportunity to to apply the knowledge that they're learning in their academic courses, if you will, to gotcha. uh, answer that question. Why do I need to know this? Yeah. Where am I going to use yeah. this at? You know, and, right. and a lot of times that educators have a hard time linking what it is they're teaching to why the student needs to know it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something specific now about, you told me off, off uh, mic that, you guys use substitute teachers just like everybody else. What advice as a principal would you have for a substitute teacher coming in there for the first time? Well, um, one, you know, <laughs> you know, beyond the, uh, what would be seem to stand out to me, you know, like the, the, uh, uh, for, for lack of better terms, the obvious, um, but, you know, yes, coming know in and, um, you know, being prepared for the day right off the bat, having a game plan in your mind um, right off the bat bringing activities with you in case Good. the plans that are, have been created, you know, aren't, aren't working or it's not working Good. out because there's things that can happen, especially in a digital era that we're in now where, you know, the teacher might leave a lesson plan and um, it may require using technology and the technology doesn't work. So um, if you can get an idea of what the lesson is that you're going to be teaching in advance and you can pull together some things that, that might uh, yes. supplement, the lesson being taught, I would, I would advise to bring some of those things with you to the school. Um, you're, you're trying to gain favor really quick with kids and kids are yeah. a tough audience. And yeah. uh, a lot of times participation is lacking of students when subs are there, they get more or less consider that to be a free day. And, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing a, you know, a bag of candy with you, you know, to reward students for participating. Exactly. Me too. In, in Me too. Structure, so. That's, that's good. That's a great start. That that's a really good answer. I mean, you, you, uh, we. I could have handed you a script to read, and it would have sounded just like that. Because I think you hit on a lot of things. We've talked on the podcast about always being prepared and having things in your back pocket, and you know, having a little candy. Uh, it's it's amazing yep. how much the students will participate just if they know they're going to get a starburst by the end of the class. It, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, kids get and. It, Kids want to have the, uh, you know, you're new, and, and you have kids that want they want to impress you too. You know, they right. Want, they want to leave a good impression. And, right. You know, you, of course, you got the kids that want to be left alone also. But yes, uh, let let me ask you this: as an administrator, uh, if a substitute teacher has an idea or a concern, how do they diplomatically say something about it without making teachers mad or administrators mad how do you say they should go about that well i've encountered this as a principal where good uh, i'm glad you got experience wants, with it yeah good. somebody wants to uh, make a point uh, i 
you never want to come across as unloading. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times when people become frustrated for whatever reason, and in this case, a lot of times I think substitute teachers can become frustrated in, in what they're doing at a school or frustrated with students. Yeah. And uh, they want to, they want to unload on, you know, the principal, let's say, or, or, or gotcha. another teacher. And, right. you know, when you visit a school for the first time or a second time or whatever, you know, you have the choice to choose whether or not you're going to go to a school or not. So you're going to formulate a, an opinion of that school um, right away. And um, I think in a first visit that always following up with the teacher with a note or an email yes. to uh, let them know how the day has gone um, is very beneficial and um, doesn't come across as unloading. And um, I would suggest at that point in time, not, not really uh, trying to make suggestions or anything, but just trying to give the information of the day. You know, the, the teacher's perspective is they just need the day to go as smooth as possible. Right. And right. so that to me is a, that should be a substitute teacher's goal when they come in. Now, in terms of offering suggestions for the school, I, I've encountered that before where I've been unloaded on and I don't receive it very well. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't mind to hear a concern, but um, I want to hear it appropriately in yes. an appropriate place. And um, I want you to put some thought into how you intend to deliver that message to me and good, I'd be happy to good. receive it and typically have an open door toward people. The more good. I get to know a sub, the more uh, comfortable I am in receiving feedback from them versus oh, that makes know, sense. a one time you dropped in my school and now you're going to tell me everything that's wrong with it and what we need to do. Right, yeah. right. That's a good answer. You know, I've enjoyed talking. We're almost out of time. Tell me um, any thought you might have in closing that you'd like to share with us before you, we get out of here. Well, um, ma mainly is that, you know, I, I don't know what you've discussed. I haven't listened to all the podcasts. I've listened into a few things, but uh, that uh, you, you know which teachers are, are, are prepared also. Absolutely. And, uh, one of the things as a sub that you can do because you're a practitioner is provide feedback to an administrator on things that may help you um, to do better as a sub. And right. you could give examples, uh, preferably from their building, of things that you've enjoyed or liked. You know, if you've been with a particular teacher from the way they do the lesson plans, the communication up front the um you know how how easy if they try to make it for you you know because there is a model out there that you can follow that would um, be beneficial especially for new teachers coming in that haven't really encountered it before and then also for um, maybe some teachers that might need a little help in you know uh, prepping for a sub because it's it's a big task it, to prep it, for right. somebody to come in and do your job on a time that you're not there. And most professionals don't have to do that. They don't have, you know, if, if, if they need a day off, it, you know, they just miss and, and, and the work stops until they can come back. So in education, it doesn't do that. So uh, that being said, I think it's, it, it's an ideal situation. I provide a checklist for my staff to uh, create when we have emergency subfolders and then also expectations of when there is a sub that, um, provide a, a skeleton detail minimal of what those plans should have. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Darren, it's been great talking to you today. Uh, I will go ahead and tell the listeners that uh, uh, we are in the same fraternity. That's how we met each other for the first time. We're, we're both Lambda Chi Alpha members. So we have that in common. I'm a lot older, as you can probably tell. But uh, other than that, uh, it's been great talking to you and Sarah today, and I wish you the best, and hopefully we'll get things back to normal in the next few months. 
Greg, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, fraternity brothers. And, and uh, you know, that's a powerful thing, regardless of the age that separates us. We are brothers yes. and, and we hold a bond. It's very special. And that's uh, kind of what's connected us to be able to do this podcast. So I agree. Uh, I hope that I have an opportunity to come back on again at another time. I would really Absolutely. Like the opportunity to sit down and, and discuss. So if you guys have any other uh, ideas, the things that you'd like to talk about or have an administrator's perspective on, I'd love to participate in that. And thank all you right. for having me. Sounds, sounds great. You all, you all have a good day. All right. Talk you to too. you later. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.